Okay, so period 10 to number, of course, period 2. Right, so, let's try and explain this, but we need to try and think about what you've learned from your bond in and structure. So, we see, when we look at melting point, a general increase as we go from lithium, beryllium, boron to carbon, and then a sudden decrease as we go to nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. Now, why is that? Well, in order to explain it, we need to consider what overall structures they have. You will know that lithium and beryllium have metallic structures. Carbon, you know, is giant covalent. Boron, it also acts as giant covalent as well. But it's carbon that you spent a lot of time talking about. And then you have these guys along here, which are all simple molecular. So how can we use our ideas from structure and bonding to um, explain that? First of all, for lithium and beryllium, why, why are they, well they're high, first of all, but why are they increasing as I go from lithium to beryllium? So what do I see? I've got strong, what type of bonds are they? The, the, the clue is in the name. Strong, what type of bond is it? Metallic bond, is it? Metallic bond. How does metallic bond work? It's the attraction between positive ions and delocalized electrons. What's happening as I go from lithium to beryllium? What's happening to the number of delocalized electrons and the charge on the ion? What's going to be the charge? If I drew a little diagram of lithium as a metallic structure, it would be Li plus, Li plus, Li plus, Li plus, all my little ions, and then in my little delocalized C. What about beryllium? How would it differ? It would be B, E, what group beryllium going to be in? Group. So what's going to be the charge of the beryllium on it? Two plus. So I'm going to have lots of beryllium two pluses. And I'm going to have a, a more electrons in my C. So I'm going to have a stronger charge because I've got a doubly charged iron. What can we say about the size of that iron? Well, how is it going to be compared to the lithium? Is beryllium going to be a large or smaller iron? Let's have a think about it. <laughs> uh, lithium is going to be that. Lithium has got three protons. Beryllium. Beryllium 2 plus only has two electrons still but he has four protons. He's got four protons attracting two electrons, whereas lithium has got three protons attracting two electrons. So which ion is going to be the smaller one? Four protons attracting two electrons, or three protons attracting two electrons? Where's the stronger attraction going to be? Um, well, you're correct on that. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be brilliant, it's going to be the smaller one, because I've got four protons attracting two electrons. We're going to look at ionic size as we go, um, as we go on in this topic. But I'm going to have the same number of electrons, but I've got four protons attracting those electrons. So it's going to be a smaller ion. So the metallic bonding, we can say metallic bonding stronger metallic bonds because we have a higher ionic charge and we have smaller ions which means we which, which causes this stronger metallic bond. 
Then we shoot up to join Cobago. What type of bonds am I breaking when I melt and join Cobago structure? The clue is in the name. Brilliant. Cobago bonds. So these have strong covalent bonds. They require a lot of energy to break. And that is why they are so high. Covalent bonds are extremely strong. They require a lot of energy to split that up. So both born and carbon are joining covalent structures. Has anybody got any thoughts? If I sort of said, well, why do you think carbon is higher than born? Anybody got any thoughts on that at all? Carbon's in group four. How many, if you think of diamond, how many covalent bonds does carbon form in diamond? The diamond structure, each carbon forms four bonds. Boron actually only forms three bonds. Brilliant. I've got more covalent bonds to break for carbon. Now I shoot down rapidly to these guys, simple molecular. So let's pull this together. What's going to be the type of intermolecular force between these guys? So the intermolecular force between nitrogen, oxygen, fluoride, and neon. Any ideas at all? What, what are your three options for intermolecular force between simple molecules? Band of bonds. Permanent dipole dipole hydrogen bonding. What one can it not be out of those three? What can it not be? Can it be? Okay. For hydrogen bonding, what do you think I need? <laughs> hydrogen. Is there any hydrogen there? Great. So it's not going to be. Let's have a think about what these molecules look like. So we're going to draw them out. Let's have a think about this. So nitrogen. Nitrogen is going to look like that. Oxygen, like so. Fluorine, like so. Remember these are all going to be diatomic molecules and then neon is a group zero, so he doesn't bond at all. Because remember, we always find these N2, O2, and N2. So, can they have a permanent dipole? No, and why can they not have a permanent dipole? Because they're going to be constantly. What must be, what would we say about the electronegativity of him? It's got to be the same, as in the same element. So the electron, so there is no dipole. So which one is it? Band of arms. Brilliant. So we have we band of arms forces between the molecules. These are easy to break and therefore low 